so my first question to you is, can you please introduce yourself and tell us about your role? So my name is Andrea and I'm a respiratory therapist. I work at the general campus of the Ottawa Hospital. My role is basically to treat, assess, and monitor uh, patients who are having difficulty breathing. So Andrea, how has COVID-19 impacted your job? Um, It has impacted almost every part of my job. Uh, When we first uh, were watching the news and uh, seeing what was happening in Europe, we uh, obviously started to get a little stressed out uh, and we started to make plans. We were doing everything um, to protect ourselves and to make sure that we could treat a large number of patients in a short amount of time. The stress level was pretty high, (laughs) gotta be honest with you. Um, But our management team, our team of physicians, they were there answering questions, talking to their colleagues in other countries. Our managers would be staying for the night shift so they could talk through what our plans were. It was just a wild ride, for sure. For the first couple of months, it was just a wild ride. Yeah, and I can imagine the anticipation of waiting for you know, your first patient to come in or your first group of patients to come in would also be very stressful as well. We, we just had no idea. We had no idea how many people were going to come, how sick they were going to be. Yeah, the anticipation was almost worse than actually, like, getting our first patient in the ICU and treating them. Yeah, I can't even imagine sort of the stress levels. Um, and and now through your experience and through the course of the pandemic, has there, what is like the biggest challenge that, that you find being at work? Um, I think the biggest challenge being at work is um, just knowing that like there are people that you don't want to give COVID to and knowing that um, you still have to treat everyone else too, because by protecting myself, I'm protecting all my other patients as well. And also I can imagine protecting the people you live with too, right? Like there's this whole other component that isn't often talked about. Like when you're in a room with someone who's COVID positive, I mean, you still have to go home, right? Um, So has that changed the way you think about how sort of you live and how you are just like in the world outside of work? I don't have children. I just have my husband. And I mean, there have been days where I come home and I just, I'm like, don't touch me. I need to go have a shower right away. And uh, (laughs) just stuff like that. It's definitely made my social um, life super tiny. I come home and I see my husband and that's pretty much it. Yeah, it's protecting everyone all the time. Yeah, I don't think we can think about how much extra that adds to your day, especially for the fact that if you're addressing um, emergency calls, you can't just walk in. You know, you got to be like, okay, now I have to put all of these things on um, and I have to make sure I'm protecting myself and the patient. So has there been anything unexpected or surprising about the virus that you you didn't expect? The most surprising thing is just who it affects more than others. Uh, I mean, we get told in the news that it affects old people, people with multiple health issues. And what we see sometimes is previously healthy patients, people who were totally fine at home, no other medical issues get incredibly sick. And that's like pretty scary. When you see that cases are starting to rise in Ottawa, Obviously you follow the news or you might know sort of what's going on around you. Do you have any, like, what do you think when you see that, when the cases are starting to go up? 
I worry that the operating rooms are going to close because there won't be enough beds. And I worry that um, people who need surgeries and need routine diagnostic testing are not going to get it because we need to divert all those resources into treating COVID patients. I worry that we're going to have to put two patients in one ICU room because we've run out of room. People need their routine surgeries. People need their routine diagnostic testing because cardiac issues uh, that are curable, they don't go away. Cancer doesn't go away just because COVID is here. Has there been uh, anything that has given you hope about the this the, the whole situation you know I uh, when I got my first uh, dose of the vaccine that gave me huge hope because I think that's the way out of this is um, scientific progress and mass vaccination are going to help protect everyone from getting sick and they're going to help loosen up all these restrictions that we have on people's movement and distance. Um, so I just, I can't wait, but uh, we're all gonna be really patient about it and uh, hopefully, hopefully everyone is gonna get vaccinated. Yeah, that's an incredible message of hope. <laughs> I would agree with that. Um, before I sort of close up with my final question, do you have anything to add just that I haven't touched on that you wanted to talk about uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, we severely restricted the amount of visitors that were allowed to come in. No, no visitors were allowed to come in. And um, I think what was really hard was watching people in the ICU on a ventilator um, in their last days and not having any family around. And I think that was, uh, that was pretty hard for everyone. And just uh, knowing that people were watching their family members for the last time over like a video chat, just, it makes me realize um, the struggles that everyone has had to do is worth it. So no one has to watch their family member through a video screen as their last breath happens. That is just awful to see and witness. Is there anything you're looking forward to, Andrea, after the pandemic's over? <sighs> Traveling. <laughs> I, I canceled a bunch of trips. I was supposed to go to Hawaii. I've never been. I was supposed to go to the Grand Canyon. I've never been. So I just can't wait to uh, see the world again. So, and yeah. uh, like, yeah go home and kiss my mom yeah those two yeah, sound those amazing two sound amazing not that i want to kiss your mom but <laughs> and do you have a, uh and andrea my last question is do you have a message for ottawa residents um i think the biggest message i have is just be kind to each other stay patient we are slowly getting the vaccine we will slowly dish it out to people and there is a light there. It is going to happen. We're doing the right thing, but it's definitely hard. It's hard to stay. At home. It's hard to do nothing. It's hard to do nothing. Wear a mask. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> oh, you're an, an amazing person. Thank okay. you for taking the time to speak with us. Um, the work you do is, I mean, I can't even really say it in words, but your your work is valued. Your work is important. You've changed lives. You've saved lives. So, you know, amongst all of this, I hope that you feel uh, gratitude from Ottawa. I hope you feel gratitude from public health <laughs> because we appreciate you. Um, thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. Oh, you're very welcome.